Hey guys, Dennis Yu, we're here at Digital Marketers Today, and we're gonna cover the content factory. So whether you're an entrepreneur, you're an agency, a solopreneur, you have a whole team, how are you gonna create lots of content at scale? I'm gonna show you the process that we use to create thousands of pieces of content and the tools behind the scenes on how all these pieces fit. So here we go. You guys know about the one minute video. When you produce lots of one minute videos, and you boost it out there for a dollar a day, you're getting lots of exposure, you're getting a lot of attention. But how do you put those things together into a cohesive strategy? You maybe have heard of the three by three grid, for example, where we have three why, three how, and three what videos. Therefore, you have three stages of the funnel, top, middle, and bottom of the funnel, where the winner stays on, you have these greatest hits, you keep making more why, more how, more what videos, right? Top, middle, bottom of the funnel. But let's go a step further because a lot of things have changed in the last few years since you've seen dollar a day and one minute video. And the shift is this. There's long form video, such as podcasts and webinars, but there's also a lot of short form content in these little snippets that are stories, Instagram reels, moments, hero shots, other kinds of short form content. So how do we bridge all this? All these different kinds of content, all these different networks, here's what you do. Think about something that you are knowledgeable in or something you want to be known to be knowledgeable about. And I want you to create an outline with 10 topics. Think of this as just something you put on a notepad. What are 10 things related to your product or service, and you wanna write a book around that or do a podcast around that, whatever it might be, you have these 10 topics of five minutes each, and then that is going to create a one hour video. This one hour video, you are gonna then run into Descript.com to chop it up into lots of little one minute videos, to transcribe it, to take out the ums and ahs, to figure out where the different chapters are, and now all of a sudden, <clears throat> You've got a whole text of a book. You've taken this one hour video and turned it into a book. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, you're gonna run it through Jarvis.ai. Jarvis.ai is an AI tool that will take content that you have and extend it, ex make it larger, amplify it, take out mistakes, be able to write it so it's catchier, put headlines against it, write intro, outro copy, write sales copy against it. And then this allows you to create more and more of these little snippets that you're then going to repurpose into blog posts, into, on WordPress, into Facebook posts, into social media like Twitter posts, into Instagram, into TikTok, into all these other kinds of channels. So at the strategy level, you have something that you want to be known for. Like how do you help families repair relationships, for example, whatever it might be, something that you want to write a book on, record that one hour video, Descript turns it into text, there's a feature inside Descript that allows you to actually take the video and the audio and it's called overdub and actually turn it into words that you didn't say, which is really kind of cool. It's deep faking for audio. Jarvis.ai extends that even further. You could even take the copy and have it go back and forth between Jarvis and Descript. If you haven't heard of these tools, it will change your life. And there's so many other tools that are competing with a Descript or competing with the Jarvis AI. Then if you wanna be able to turn it into an actual book, you could use this other tool that I like. I'm not an affiliate for, for these guys. Design R, literally take that video and it turns it into a whole book. You can take this output and then you can put it inside LearnDash in WordPress. So it's automatically now a course that's broken into chapters. You can load it up into Kajabi. You can use Thinkific. You can use any of the ClickFunnels even, all these other formats of different courses. So here you have a book, here you have a course, and then whatever your favorite podcasting tools are, now all of a sudden you've taken this long form piece of content, which literally took you just an hour of your time to record in the studio on video, and now you've got tons and tons and tons of these little social snippets, you have blog posts, but you have long form content at the same time. Now the reason why this is important is that everybody now has a book, a course, and a podcast. It's like the new business card, right? It's the same way that people now as part of their personal brand, because people buy based on those relationships and they don't trust the big brands quite as much as they trust word of mouth. They trust what their friends have to say. The production of one of these assets, whether it's a course or a book or a podcast, 
I believe is now standard. And it's almost like there's pollution going on because there's so many people now that are publishing their books that it's almost like if you don't have a book, then you don't have this kind of authority. So think about the authority that you would have and the benefit to your business of having one of these particular components. If you knew that you could produce this for about $250 to $300, even if it was just you. Because if you look at what you have to do, you only have to produce this one hour piece of content. All this other work is done by tools and processes. And this is the thing that really just blew my mind because I thought, oh my goodness, I know I've always wanted to write a book on Facebook ads. I know I've wanted to write a book on how do you hire VAs or how do you manage people or how do you do whatever it is. You have multiple books inside you. And what we have found is that a lot of people, once they write their first book, that's sort of breaking the ice and they realize there's actually four or five other books that are inside of them. So if you take what Chandler Bolt has to say of self-publisher school, same kind of thing. Sit down, record this one hour video. Look, if you don't want to sit down and write and all that, super easy. 10 bullet points around this particular topic. Now all of a sudden you have all these other components. Now what happens in the middle before you get all these outputs that are on the right side are all these other kinds of tools. So let's talk about what some of these tools are and see which of them are inside your stack and which of them are things that maybe you want to consider adding to your stack before going absolutely crazy in, in, in a tool sort of frenzy. So first off, if you don't have workers in your content factory and it's just you, first step, go to Fiverr, go to Upwork, get someone on Fancy Hands, hire a virtual assistant on onlinejobs.ph. When you have these people that are in your factory processing your content, you're the architect, you have other people that are in the factory that are basically assembly line workers, you can use our training. So if you're in DM Labs and you've seen our other training in DM, we have processes on exactly what virtual assistants are doing. You can take the templates that we already have inside Digital Marketer to get this content edited and produced and turned into assets over here. What I like to do is in addition to Descript and Jarvis, which are the main two to be able to edit this, this text, is I will run through like Hemingway.app. I will run through different WordPress tools. I like to use Infusionsoft that ties in with Mimbarium, which integrates here with LearnDash. There's lots of other tools that you can use for like social media monitoring and cutting up these different kinds of clips. But I think the most important part, more than all the different tools that I'm mentioning, is the process of, of a VA who is doing the video editing, right? So even though you can chop this stuff up into different components in, inside Descript, to be able to take this long form video and pull out these different clips and be able to write headlines against these components requires some kind of virtual assistant. So really this part and the content factory is more about the process than the technology. So your ability to produce this content and make sure that efficiently it's able to go through is really dependent upon having strong project management. So using a Fiverr or an Upwork or a Fancy Hands or other system is, is key in managing these different workers. Now, when you have these different components, now you've got lots and lots, just from this one hour recording, you've got lots of these one minute videos, lots of these that are chopped up into 15 second stories and snippets. This is when you start to apply dollar a day. So you know that on Facebook or on Twitter or on other networks, you've got content that you are putting out there organically, right? And we know that now it's a pay to play game. So if I know I've got this Facebook post and I put a dollar a day against it, so I'm spending $7 because I'm putting a dollar a day against it for seven days, there's probably a 10% chance that I'm going to find a winner. And I could take the same piece of content, put it on Twitter for a dollar a day. So $7 over seven days. And it may or may not win. And I'm going to try the same thing. Maybe on Instagram, I'm going to boost the post. Maybe I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to spend $7. Maybe I'm going to try it on Snapchat which is a $5 minimum budget. So I'm gonna spend, say, $35. Maybe I'm gonna try it on TikTok, which is a $20 a day minimum budget. So maybe I'll spend 140, which is a little bit high. Maybe I'm gonna to go, to, go to LinkedIn, which is a $10 a day budget, and I'll spend 70. So when you've published all this content across all these social networks and you've boosted it, now you're letting the machine do the work for you. Instead of trying to fight the algorithm, we know that the algorithm that drives ads based on objective-based bidding 
and the algorithm that drives engagement in the different feeds on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and whatnot are really the same thing. So we're on the same side. We're gonna find the best items out of here and put that into our greatest hits library. And that's how we have these very best items, right? You might have hundreds of items that come from a single video. So now let's create a second book. Let's create a second course. What's some related topic that you can create something else on? And let's create a third one. And the beauty is once you've gone through this the first time, and let's say you spent anywhere from $300 to maybe $1,000 to be able to run one project all the way through here, let's do another one. What are other things that are tied to your business that you want to be known for? Is it because you're a doctor? Is it because of your personal brand? Is it because of your love for your family? Is it because you're a strong agency? Is it because you love Torchy's Tacos in Austin? Whatever it is that you want to develop expertise around that builds your authority, do a one hour webinar on this. And think about many other things that you can do. In fact, every time you have a podcast, let's say it's a topic that you don't even know a lot about, invite someone you know who is an expert on that and you can turn that podcast episode into an ebook. That ebook chopped up into different pieces you can see probably like right here on DM, they're turned into social snippets, turned into blog posts, turned into YouTube videos, and you can go even further than that too. Because once you've published a book, you can submit that to places like freeebooks.net, which is a domain rank 73, where you can submit this for free to a million people a month that are coming to sites like this. And now you're able to get SEO power because these sites are linking to you. You can get an ISBN number and run through Kindle Direct Publishing. So now it's on Amazon available for sale and you can be a bestseller in a subcategory, like a low competition category, so you can declare that you have a bestseller. Funny thing, I have a friend who does legal digital marketing, so for lawyers, teaching them how to do SEO and PPC. And he's been able to build his whole career as an agency by saying that he has the number one bestselling book in digital marketing for attorneys. And I remember when he published that book, he had all of 10 people buy that book, but because there was so little co competition in that category, he was the winner. So think about the perceived authority that comes from literally just dominating the niche that you're in by having a course, by having a book, by having a podcast, and then by bringing all the other people that are experts and having this be enriched. It doesn't have to be just a one hour podcast. It could be five one hour episodes or 30 minute episodes with other experts that you can run through this process and then turn into these different snippets. Now that you have these snippets here and you have these greatest hits that you initially tested for a dollar a day, you're then going to put $10 a day against these particular winners. You're going to tag the other people, could be clients, could be employees, it could be partners, it could be other organizations. You're gonna tag them in these ones that are proven to be winners and continue to amplify it. And this is what you're going to have as your evergreen machine. Once this is working, your greatest hits your very best three of each of these and three different levels of your funnel. Now you have a winner. Now you have a content engine that's continuing to produce leads, continuing to drive people all the way through, and then you're able to get off of being stuck in the content calendar. Most people, they're stuck in the content calendar because they have their October content, November content, December content, and they're constantly having to produce more content. But the beauty is you produce something around a topic. A topic is timeless. A topic is something that you know people will resonate with your stories. They'll resonate with the expertise. This will always continue. And now you can focus, ironically, on instead of just producing a lot of content, you're producing content strategically. Because now you're thinking, what's something that could be really awesome on this topic? How do I find the different angles based on why, how, and what? And how do I figure out what channel's going to work? So this gigantic Rubik's Cube, if you will, gets resolved when you put this content out here and then you realize, you know what, I didn't realize it, but on LinkedIn, a certain category of targeting or, or certain you know, persona is resonating on LinkedIn against this particular type of how video, right? Because when you know what is the right message to the right user on the right channel, that's something you can say, you know what, I'm gonna put $10 a day against that. I'm gonna put $50 a day against this. We did this for Infusionsoft. And we, I think we had a hundred different one minute videos and I said, you know what? I think this one's going to be the winner. And other people said, no, I think this is gonna be the winner. And you know what? We were all completely wrong.
because of the 100 videos that we made, it was some random video that was just plain, but it wasn't funny, it wasn't really clever, but that was the one that won, and we put $1.3 million against it. And that's the thing that drove the most leads. So this is really a smart testing strategy. So if you look beyond the fact that there's all these different processes with VAs or all these different tools that you can use, which can look overwhelming, the key is we are taking something that we want to be known for that anchors to our product or service that works for agencies, it works for e-com, it works for solopreneurs, it works for local businesses. We're chopping it into these components. And the reason why strategically this works is that we're now allowing the engine to be able to decide which particular ingredients are working. When you have long form content that you put out there and you post a 40 minute piece on YouTube or a 40 minute piece on Facebook, it doesn't allow the algorithm to figure out which of these particular components should absolutely deserve to rank or should be able to get the most virality. And thus you can't boost one component of a whole system. You have to break out these little chunks, put little bits of money against it. And so lots of little one minute videos or 15 second videos at a dollar a day is how we're gonna find winners. And the cool thing is when you find a winner, odds are if it's winning on Twitter, it's probably gonna win on Facebook. It's probably gonna win on YouTube, on Instagram, just by being repurposed. And now you found something that's really awesome and you create more and more things around it. What we found is in the last year or so, because everything, the whole world has shifted into digital first, this content factory is something all of us need to do. We need to be thinking about how do I spend 5% of my time creating this, you know, five percent. I need to focus on this 5%, which is creating the content. And then the 95% is all the other people that are doing the work, right? If I want to work on my business instead of in my business, I need to figure out how I need to spend all my time here and have other people that are in the factory doing the factory work. I don't want to be a factory worker myself. But I do know that if I need to be able to compete and play with all these different networks, if I know I need to produce a piece of authoritative content, I need to have this machine that's operating. So I hope you found it valuable. I hope that you will put in place some of these particular components. If you have not learned about the one minute video, if you've not learned about dollar a day, I'd encourage you to press stop right now, study those components and then come back here. And then how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. So I would love to see what your feedback is on what components of these you are already putting in place. This is what we found has worked best for us, but certainly there's many ways to be able to get this thing done. But regardless, we know that there's lots of ways to process, distribute, and repurpose content. And we want Digital Marketer to be the best place for all of us to teach step-by-step step how we're getting it done based on our own direct results. I'm Dennis Yu, I'm so glad you're here. I'd love to hear your feedback.